Hip extensions can be performed on a Swiss ball. It's another way to progress the movement and to increase the range of motion. There are a couple of key points though that you have to know about performing this motion. So what I have you do is go ahead and walk your way down on a Swiss ball. And so you're gonna be resting on your mid to upper back and your head can be resting down against the ball. Now, in this position, we wanna have your feet about 12 inches apart. That's kind of a standard, but it may vary depending on the person. If you have a lot of tension in the IT bands, you may need to go wider with your stance because if the IT bands are too tight, you may have limited hip extension and that's already gonna uh, create a problem. So 12 inches is pretty much the standard, but we can open them a little bit wider as necessary in order to get the maximum amount of hip extension up into the movement. The primary problem we have with hip extension motions when the knees are bent are the influence of the hip flexors. The hip flexors being the psoas muscle and of course the quadricep muscle called the rectus femoris. When these two muscles are too tight, it's gonna limit how far you can extend your actual hip joint. Now this becomes a problem in the hip extensor exercise because we're trying to maximize glute muscle recruitment, which means we need hip extension. So normally during the motion, when the hips are lifted straight up, okay, if the hip flexors are too tight, we overextend through the lumbar spine. You can see the lower back arching quite a bit. And a lot of individuals, this causes uh, low back pain. So the issue there is that the hip flexors are too tight and need to be stretched. But we can work around this because the exercise can still be effective even if we don't have perfect hip flexor range of motion. So when we dip back down into the hip flexion, to start with, we can pre-tilt the pelvis. So we rock the pelvis backward into what we call a like posterior pelvic tilt, and then we squeeze the glutes and we try and maintain that posterior pelvic tilt when we lift. And if you only go as high as the hip flexor tension will allow, you see that we don't pour that motion into the lumbar spine. Lumbar spine is flat here at the top and we can get a maximum glute squeeze. Now, if you notice, she hasn't been able to go as high as she did previously. If I allow you to let that go and lift up higher, see how much more range of motion we get. But that pours into the lumbar spine and that's not useful for us. So we're gonna come down a little bit, we're gonna tilt the pelvis and now lift up and through it only as high as you can get while holding that posterior pelvic tilt. So that's about perfect. Now, the other thing that we can do is if the hip flexors are really, really tight, the feet can be moved further out in front of the body. So if you step forward just a little bit there, that'll lessen the amount of tension on the rectus femoris and allow a little bit more of that posterior pelvic tilt and lift. So those are two ways that you can help modify the supine hip extension. But the version on the ball is very useful because you can see the range of motion that we gain. So dip all the way down and look at how far down we can get into that. So not only do we condition the glutes and the hamstrings in this deep position, but we get a little bit more deep knee angle as well, which is very useful. So again, to recap, we posterior pelvic tilt, squeeze the glutes, lift all the way up, only as high as your hip extension will allow. We hold for the amount of time that your corrective program dictates, and then we lower back down again. Now additionally, to assist with the recruitment of the glutes, we want to be able to avoid using too much groin motion, which is letting the knees fall toward the midline. So we want to make sure that we gently push our knees outward and that can also mean leaning slightly toward the outside part of your feet to encourage the external hip rotators to do their job. So you slightly push the knees outward, posterior pelvic tilt, lift all the way up, hold, and then lower back down. When you're finished, it, depending on the height of the ball, you can either drop right down to the floor or in this case, I'll just have you walk all the way back up the ball again to the finished decision. So that's the supine hip extension on the Swiss ball with specific corrective measures that you have to pay attention to in order to avoid creating a faulty movement pattern and overdoing the lumbar extension.